Right, so welcome back. It's another great test of our Seagate drives here. We're utilizing the Seagate Ironwolf series of drives, and these are the Seagate NAS Ironwolves drives. These are the 110 series. What we're going to do is use this QNAP NAS, QNAP TVS 972XT. It's got a great i5 CPU inside, and we're going to utilize that CPU with a single hard drive and do a bunch of internal checks, a bunch of internal file transfers on the NAS. Then we're going to create some SSD cache using our two brand new Seagate Ironwolf drives getting some performance values out of those with exactly the same tests and finally we're going to see how that compares with the same SSD cache but this time with two Samsung 860 Evo drives far more cost efficient but will the performances compare let's find out and make our way to QTS now right so here we are on the desktop interface of our QNAP NAS once again we're using the TVS 972 and you know what? Let's get rid of all those other tabs because we're not going to need them for this video and make our way into this. So, uh, the device itself, we're running on a single hard drive at the moment. We're not using any of the SSDs that we've installed for this video. So, if we make our way into the storage manager, I'll give you a little bit more information about the storage environment that we're going to be utilizing today. You can see that we've got 4 gig of memory on the DVS 972XT. And then in this first round of tests, we're just going to use the single hard drive inside this device. We've already created the volume and the shared drive and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully we'll make our way into it. The screen recording software will cause an ever so slight delay to proceedings. Don't blame the NAS for that. Um, and on that first drive, we can see it is a 14 TB Seagate Iron Wolf drive inside this device. And again, there's no RAID. It's a drive on its own. And as you can also see, we haven't done anything with these other drives. We've not create a RAID out of them, they're not accessible, and the only storage area, the only RAID group on this device is, and it's not even a RAID, it's that single 14 TB hard drive from Seagate. Now previously on this video, or on previous videos, I've already bunged loads of content on this disc, but the ones we're going to focus on are these folders here. These comprise around about 100 gigabytes of data. Inside, there's a multitude. There's almost 5,000 different kinds of files spanning everything from documents to PDFs to music to everything. And what we're going to do is copy this 100 gig of files in three different locations on this hard drive. So, again, we're not using alternate media. We're not going to be going outside the NAS. We're just going to copy this media into three different folders all on the same disk, effectively making the NAS create all of this data all at the same time on the same disk because ultimately that can be one of the biggest bottlenecks with media anyone that's ever tried to copy media from different locations on a hard disk on their pc uh, uh, you know and backed up and i had a whole queue of different things will know that the more times you copy on a disk and that is a normal mechanical hard drive the harder it becomes and the slower it affects everything else so what we're going to do is we're going to start the timer in a sec so do give a leeway of about 15 to 20 seconds at the end of this test when comparing all these different results and i'm going to copy this 100 gig into three different locations so without further ado let's get this started we're going to copy there we're going to go straight into copy and first folder we're going to copy it into this download folder so again all 100 gig is now going to be copied into that first folder next we're going to copy again while it's doing that and we're going to copy it this time into the next folder along we're going to copy it into this home folder i know a number of you will tell me we could just control v uh, control c control v this but then you won't see the process next we're going to copy again and this time same 100 gig of files into the third folder along homes so that's a total of 300 gig of files and folders being created while our stopwatch clicks away and what we'll do is we'll open up there and this will there's all the previous tests of creation we want to scroll down and these are the three we want to focus on these three processes here and what we'll do is we'll move that ever so slightly there we'll move the utility going up here so we'll make sure you've got all that on screen and finally We'll leave this stopwatch on screen while this takes place. So again, these are the three that we need to focus on throughout this test. And what I'm going to do is fast forward to the completion of this so we can see just how long it's taken the device to finish this operation. So let's go without cash. Let's do our speed test.
Okay, so for our next test, because it took so, so long, clearly in the previous test, we're going to run our test now with SSD cache enabled. And once again, it is worth highlighting that we are using SSD cache to support a single drive. This is just to show you in the lowest instance how much difference it can make. But of course, it is highly recommended that you have multiple drives in a RAID working alongside that SSD cache. So, in order to build cache, we need to head over to the Storage and Snapshot Manager on our QNAP NAS, and there we can start building our area of cache storage. So, go to Cache Acceleration, and we will create our area of Read Write Cache. Um, the first one we're going to go for the Samsung series of drives, I believe. So, for now, we'll go for that we will select the Samsung drives. We'll do them in read and write cache. So in a RAID 1 environment, we'll click next. We'll enable over provisioning. Um, we'll leave all the sort of settings on the default ones. And we shall create our area of SSD cache storage. And again, we will do exactly the same thing again with the new Seagate Iron Wolf drives. We can see how long this takes to create our cache. It's just going to initialize there. I might fast forward the video a little bit forward to when this is completed and we'll run the same test that we did previously. Right, so our cache has been built. And once again, this is in those Samsung drives. And what we're going to do is repeat the same read-write operations that we did in the previous part of this video. So the cache has been made. It's read-write there. We'll close that down. And as we can see on the file manager, we've now got that little cache acceleration symbol to let us know that this volume, that hard drive there, is supported by read-write cache. So once again, we're going to copy these files into those three directories again. And just to let you know, I have deleted them and completely removed them from the system and rebooted the system since we did that first test. So in theory, we are now running on a clean slate. So without further ado, let's get the clock up and we'll get this test started. One, two, three, go. Okay, so we're going to click those files. So once again, for those that are complaining about the speed of the copy, do bear in mind, I want to show my working throughout. So click that there. Do exactly the same send again. And this time, we'll copy to the second directory. And finally, we'll copy the same files for the third and final time to that directory there. And again, those that follow the transfer from the previous video will know that it was painfully slow and we'll leave the clock there on screen while we pass forward time but it already looks like we've got an increase in speed but we won't know for certain and until we give it a fair amount of time so let's fast forward Right, so we've moved our Samsung 860s out of the cache, we've deleted all the data we've created, we've rebooted the NAS, and it's time to start the next part where we use our Seagate IronWolf 110 NAS SSDs. So let's create the SSD cache area the same way we did before, but this time we're going to scroll on past those Samsungs, and we're going to use these SSDs from Seagate. We're going to once again create read write cache, sorry, wrong one, read write cache in a RAID 1 environment, and we're going to go on forwards. So we've created our SSD cache, we've got the files ready, there's our little lightning symbol to say that our cache acceleration is enabled, and without further ado, let's get straight into it, shall we? So, first things first, let's get the alarm and get three, two, one, go. Okay, wallet, 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 wallet. There's our test files again. Copy those to the first location. Lots of fun and games while we are off camera. I'll explain that to you in just a second while I get the next stage of the copying underway. Interesting fact, I should have remembered while creating the cache for this device. One second. 
So we're going to leave that to carry on there and I'll just fill you in some of the blanks about why we had to cut the recording. So um, as I've mentioned in other videos before and something that I rather annoyingly forgot, when you have to create SSD cache for any system, you should always bear in mind that you need to have enough memory to support the available amount of cache. And unfortunately, because I was using two drives with 1.92 terabytes each, even in that RAID 1 environment, I did not have enough memory in this four gigabyte NAS to support that level of cache. So I had to create a partition and therefore should make the SSD appear smaller than it actually was. So hopefully this won't impinge the test too much. I do predict that these are going to be very, very similar indeed in terms of output, but that was just to explain a little delay there during the filming. Uh, and also during the course of this, having to delete some of those INI files that got created, which have now updated the modified date. So don't worry, nothing has changed. It's just a case of some fiddly stuff that had to happen in between. Um, do check out my video, by the way, regarding the Synology NAS version of these tests. Um, in those tests, the Seagate drives inside that DS2419 Plus beat the Samsung's by around six to seven minutes overall with caching enabled. So I'm hoping we're going to be seeing similar results here, if not very, very similar indeed. So hopefully we're going to fast forward now. We're going to make my way towards the end of this video. I'm going to carry on and do some other stuff. I'll come back into this room in about an hour's time. I can leave this thing recording. But otherwise, I'm going to fast forward towards the end of the video to see when this is going to be completed. Let's leave that on screen there so we can come back to it later on. And I'll see you later on in the video. So after doing all of our tests, what have we learned so far? Well, first and foremost, unsurprisingly, having a hard drive on its own with our SSD cache was significantly slower. Another thing I would highlight that I didn't really highlight throughout the course of this video and a little bit remiss looking back on the previous recorded footage was that the drive that was being utilized was a 7200 Iron Wolf Pro hard drive. Now this means that the results that we've gotten, you may have noticed, are better than that one when we did the Synology test. Now, this isn't anything to do with the QNAP NAS in this instance. Don't think that just because those speeds were so fantastic, it means QNAP's better than Synology. We're not proving that today. It's because the hard drive we'll be using in this scenario was a Seagate Iron Wolf Pro with 7200 RPM and a better cache than the WD4TB we used in the previous test. So you have to bear that in mind. Also, we're using a much more powerful NAS in the case of the QNAP, the TVS972XU, which has got a Ryzen 6-core CPU compared with the Atom quad-core in the Synology. So it is, it is something you have to bear in mind, so don't go comparing these results with the results of the Synology test. What we want to look at are these SSDs. Now, straight away, you may have noticed the speed difference as well. The Samsung did the test in a little over 53 minutes. I rounded it to the nearest minute, if I'm honest. Uh, some of this footage went on for hours. But 53 minutes is how long it took the Samsung 860s to do their reading and writing actions across three 100 gigabyte copies onto that hard drive from within the hard drive. And significantly less than that was the Seagate. The Seagate Iron Wolves, once again, were less. In the previous test, the speed difference was about 7 to 10 minutes, depending on different like versions of this test that I've done previously. But this is by far the biggest margin of difference I've seen, almost 15 minutes in difference between the two of them. Now, a lot of that is, of course, to do with the NAS, but another part of it is to do with over-provisioning that was enabled in the SSD cache, and something you get thanks to that Durowrite technology on those C uh, Seagate Iron Wolf drives. Now, we have to do this test another time, perhaps with some Pro Series drive, because I think that'll be a lot even a test. But what we're looking at right now is the difference between Evo drives, which are kind of domestic SSDs for home PCs, and we're comparing that against, frankly, enterprise quality SSDs for NAS. So for now, if you're looking for performance, a basic standard SSD just isn't enough. And I do think you need a NAS specialized professional SSD like the Seagate. 
In the following test after this, we're going to be doing test against this Samsung Pro series of drives, which I think is going to be a lot more of an even fight between these two like-priced and like-hardware solid-state drives. But for now, I've got to give first place to the Samsung IronWolf 110 SSDs in this test. Hope you've enjoyed it. Do check out the rest of the tests, and I'll see you next time.